Hey, everybody. This is a clip from the latest episode of The Randy Road Show. If you want the full episode, you can watch live on Free Speech TV, Dish Channel 9415, Direct TV 348, Sling, Roku, and Apple TV. Who's there? Hey! That's a figment of your imagination. The Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. It sounds like you don't believe her. I don't. I think that this is very scripted confirmation hearing stuff that we hear over and over and over again. And then uh, judges go on the court having said all this stuff and they go out and behave completely differently. And frankly, her description of Judge Scalia is not even very accurate. Um, Justice Scalia was um, in the uh, Citizens United Court um, and in the Shelby County Court, I believe. And both of those were decisions that violated the principles that uh, this nominee just said he stood for. It just, it just ain't so. It's, it's uh, confirmation theater. Exactly. And, and this is what goes on now with Supreme Court nominations. This is what goes on uh, confirmations. They just sit there and they say, stare decisis, and they say, well, Senator, I can't weigh in. I need a specific case. I would need to know this. I would need to, I would never overturn precedent. I would never, and then they go about overturning precedent. Then they go about inserting words into, into statutes that don't appear in the statutes, like the word violent when it says felons can't. Felons can't, uh, you know, uh, own, own a gun. Once you've committed a felony against the United States, uh, you know, that's it. You forfeit your right to uh, own a firearm. Uh, th that's just one of the, the deals. But, you know, look, this is what happens. This is what nominees do. They, they, they write the, the most seemingly unobjectionable, dry stuff. But really what I see in there is judicial, uh, a pathway to judicial activism cloaked mm -hmm. in judicial humility. Uh, at the end of the day, rights in this country have been expanded because courts have understood uh, what the true meaning of the letter of the law and, and the spirit of the Constitution is. And that is not about time traveling yourself back to the 18th century uh, and subjecting yourself to the same prejudices and limitations uh, as the people who write these words. The Constitution is a living document because the English language is a living language. And you need to have some readiness to understand that in order to serve on the court in a way that's actually going to make life better. It was actually Thomas Jefferson himself who said that uh, we might as well ask a man to still wear the coat which fitted him when he was a boy, as expect future generations to live under what he called the regime of their barbarous ancestors. Uh, so even the founders that, uh, uh, the, the, that these kind of dead hand originalists claim fidelity to understood better than their ideological descendants, uh, today's judicial uh, so-called conservatives the importance of keeping with the times. And we deserve judges and justices who understand that. They're both from South Bend, Indiana. Isn't that interesting? They're both very religious. They're both, uh, you know, uh, church-going um, regulars. That's Pete Buttigieg and Amy. Now, the thing about Amy is, as if we couldn't find a jurist other than her, the thing about Amy is she belongs to a cult that includes about 1,600, 1,700 members and identifies herself as a Catholic. Well, there are billions of Catholics and only 1,700, and that's a generous estimate, of people of praise. And she has been indoctrinated into this small little group from the day she was born. How would you feel if I picked an Amish person? Would you be cool with that? No. What if I picked a Satanist? Would you be cool with that? No. No. But she, she says she can check her religion at the door, although she signed a document that says that abortion is barbaric and that in vitro fertilization is also part of abortion and it's barbaric. Uh, I'm not sure she can check it at the door. I'm not really sure. But this is what 
confirmation hearings have become now. And we need to put as much pressure as we can on the Senate now so that Thursday becomes a contested day and not a lifetime appointment on the Supreme Court when only a third of us are into it. Republicans are going to vote for her. And she has the votes. Republicans control the Senate. Correct. So is, the, is your goal, since you don't appear to be able to pick off any, any other Republican votes that I can tell, um, to make the case about that she's going to overturn Obamacare, Obamacare the Affordable Care Act, and, and make it kind of like a, a, a rallying cry to vote against Trump? Is that really the goal of the hearings here? Well, if there's any way to turn this, it's because um, a Republican in the committee or two more Republicans on the floor choose to vote against her. And there's immense pressure from big Republican political forces to cram her on the court. They've been desperate to own this court for a long time. Long time. So they're really going to have to have a good reason to push back. And that reason is going to be the public, particularly for senators in close races, calling up and saying, hey, whoa, 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 wait a minute. She's going to get rid of my health care. She's going to get rid of Roe versus Wade and my ability to determine my own choices. And she's going to get rid of Obergefell. Those are the three, being the gay marriage case, that is, those are the three things that are in the Republican Party platform. Right. Judges must reverse those decisions. So I think it's very fair for Democrats to point out that that's the plan. And we know that's the plan because the Republicans said so. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not fair. I'm, I'm just I'm just wondering what the strategy is since it, I mean, I don't I don't see any more votes for you to pick up. I guess uh, who has said they're going to vote uh, against her in the Republican Party right now? Well, the the, the um, signals are from Senator Murkowski and Senator, Senator Collins. Collins. Right. Yeah. That, but you need you need four. I mean, Correct. I don't, I don't so see we any, need two more. And I, I don't and see it, anyone else. Do you? Not at the moment. That's why it's important to make this confirmation process salient to real Americans who have real skin in the game for health care, for instance, mm -hmm. um, in the middle of a pandemic. For, you know, we've had a whole generation of women who've been brought up with Roe versus Wade as a constitutional baseline, as a given. The idea that this nominee might knock that out from underneath and reopen all those sore wounds, um, that's something that I think people should be concerned about. Yeah. And if people are concerned enough, even politicians with very grumpy donors trying to get something done, Sometimes answer. Sometimes. So Corey Gardner. So Joni Ernst in Iowa. So Martha McSally in Arizona. These are the people who are in hotly contested elections, okay? Mark Kelly is, uh, you know, doing really, really, really well in Arizona against Martha McSally. They are shameless, these people, literally. On their way out the door, they want to pack the court three weeks before an election when they clearly said that they wouldn't. And, and by the way, here's the precedent. Here's the precedent. There has never, and I mean never, been a Supreme Court confirmation three weeks ahead of an election. Never, not once. In fact, there's never been a Supreme Court confirmation in an election year after July. That's just a fact. This is a sleazy, smarmy, court-packing maniac known as Mitch McConnell and his freaking GOP that is desperate to pack the court to take away regulations, health care, consumer rights, workers' rights, OSHA, rights that women have died for, gay marriage, dark money in our politics, gerrymandering, voting rights, all of it, all of it in a 6-3 court with these lunatic fringy people making the decisions about all of these topics will not go well for anybody but very rich white landowners. <laughs>